This is a story, a fantastically true story, from the files of Herbert A. Philbrick, who for nine frightening years did lead three lives, citizen, communist, counter-spy, and who has now revealed for the first time his secret files concerning not only his own activities, but also the current activities of other counter-espionage agents. For obvious reasons, the names, dates, and places have been changed, but the story is based on fact. This week, Herbert A. Philbrick brings you the story of the counter-spy who stopped an execution ordered by the party to keep one of its high-level members from talking. The conference, important enough to be called by Bill Carter, that means top-level business. And because the FBI has the comrades on the run, every meeting becomes an exercise in hide-and-seek. But this is a meeting the FBI will know about. That's your job, Philbrick. Communication specified you, Philbrick. There was no time to set up a regular meeting. I'll be brief. The party has got a very important job for you. We think that James Swayze is going to talk to the FBI to reduce his sentence. James Swayze? He's one of the most dedicated communists the party ever had. Comrade, we know James Swayze. We also know what happens to our men when they go to prison. Swayze is old. He's tired. The conviction under the Smith Act finished him. Why is he going to talk? Because he's lost his convictions about communism and changed his mind, or because he wants to reduce his sentence? It's a good question, Philbrick. We don't know. But if he has, he's a danger to everybody in the party. Very dangerous. What do you want me to do? The executive committee has decided that he must die before he talks. I've already done the groundwork on the problem. Mm -hmm. How do we accomplish this? We have a contact. You've been selected to make all the arrangements. Why me? Because I'm known to the FBI now. You're not. This must be handled by someone who is not a known communist. Okay. Who do you want me to see? You start out at $1,000. Our top is five. This person expecting me? At the time and place written on the match pad. It's a tough job. It's going to be a mess afterwards. Not half the mess there's going to be if we don't take care of him. And Conrad, there can be no failure. You're stuck, Philbrick, with murder. But take it easy, make it look natural. Then arrange a meeting with the FBI. This will be a new one for Jerry Dressler. against anything like this before, Jerry. What is it? Murder. Who? James Swayze. Who's handling it? Me. How do you go about making the arrangements? Through a fellow named Jack Norris. Gangster. The price is $5,000 for the job. I'm to arrange it. Well, this sounds bad. Well, we get to work on it right away. Yeah, but if I set it up, are you going to stop it? I will have to. What Swayze has to say, we'll need. And we don't want any communist martyrs. Well, if you stop it, they'll come looking for me. I'm supposed to be handling it alone. Herb, Swayze and what he has to say are very, very important to us. More important even than keeping you a communist in good standing. End of the line, huh, Jerry? Yeah, we'll do what we can to keep you clean. We'll keep in touch with you. Herb, this afternoon you'll receive a package. Use it tonight. Inside the package you'll find an address. Now send what you get to that address. He's finally pulled a switch. You're going to meet a gangster.
hoodlum, but he's never been caught. Sit down. Yeah. Who? James Swayze. He's in the federal penitentiary. It's not going to be easy. It's to look like an accident if possible. Have you a picture? Mm. Hmm. His face looks familiar. Can you get it done in 48 hours? The price will be 5000 It's pretty steep. It's your hot chestnut, not mine. I asked if you could get it done in 48 hours. We've got other contacts. I don't know, after I talk to my man. $5,000 is too much. Is it? When you want to set a guy up so bad, you do it in a federal pen? Half now and half when the job's finished? All now. Put it on the box. Thanks. I want to see the man. He's very shy. I want to see the man who's going to handle the job. It's our only protection. You've seen me. My mistake. I thought your group were amateurs. We're not amateurs, Mr. Norris. How does it feel, Philbrick? A man scheduled to die thanks to you. And you can't do anything but have faith in Dressler and his plan to save Swayze's life. There'll be a pass for you to see him at the visitor's gate. Tomorrow at two. You'll be the attorney. What name shall I put it in? Masters. Mr. Masters. Thank you, Mr. Masters. It's a pleasure to do business with you. Anything about this secret room, Philbrick. It's getting to be the only place you feel really safe. Sit down. Who? Swayze. James Swayze, he's in the federal penitentiary. Legal evidence, Philbrick. The material from which they can build a strong, airtight indictment against Jack Norris. The untouchable, the man who never went to jail for anything. And it all begins with a little spool of wire. Better hope the FBI will keep you out of this, Philbrick. You, Mr. Norris. How'd you know where I was? I always check on my customers, Masters. You're no exception. So you can tell the police who hired you in case something goes wrong, huh? <laughs> no, I never admit anybody hired me. That would be signing my own death warrant. <laughs> I just like to know, that's all. So you can deny the whole thing? Yeah. We found out who your playmate Swayze is. The price has gone up. Why? He's a big commie. There'll be a big noise. His political beliefs don't mean anything to us. Mr. Masters, I gave you credit for brains. Give me credit for having some, too. The only reason you and the people you represent could have for wanting Swayze knocked off is very obvious to me. And what's that? Swayze is a communist. If he talks, more communists. That's you, Masters. And your friends. So what's the price? 10,000. That's crazy. Check with your friends. If they won't pay, don't bother to look me up. It's worth every penny now that I know what killing the old boy does for you. I'll check. 10 grand. Or pick your door. Something wrong? Norris knows the whole plan. It wasn't hard to figure out. 
but doubling his price, $10,000. Norris needs a lesson. Look, comrade, Norris is a gangster, a very successful gangster. He's got us where he wants us, and he knows it. All right, we'll pay his price. I do think, though, he ought to be convinced that we're just as tough as he is, just to protect our future dealings with him. He may not be easy to convince. Comrade, the party's got men who are trained in violence, just as Norris's men are trained. You're right. Let's go, Philbrick. Go into your act. Norris must respect you, as he respects only strength and violence. Or your assignment to keep Swayze from talking won't get anywhere. Take it easy, mister. Take it easy. Mr. Norris. Okay, but why all the strong arm stuff? We just wanted you to know how we feel. We don't like being held up for the extra money. But you said you'd pay. And we will pay. But that's it. There isn't any more money. We wouldn't want you to change your mind again. You've got a deal. We'll handle Swayze. Now, if anything should go wrong, Mr. Norris, our men will know what to do, just as your men would know what to do. You'll have your visitors pass tomorrow at 10. Will you be there? Yeah, you'll get your protection. You'll see me arrange it. Let you talk to my boy yourself. Good. Now, we do understand each other, don't we? Yeah. We do understand each other. We don't like slip-ups. You can order Swayze's funeral wreath now. <laughs> Put that way back under there. And let's run this wire back under the counter. Right. And out the window and over to the warden's office. We'll have to hurry this through, Bill, to get your clothes changed and get you all set up by 10 o'clock. Okay. Looks like the latest model, Bill. <laughs> now let's get this going. By the time we get this meeting tape, the warden will be in here to lock you up. You know what to do. Yeah. Hi, Masses. Hi. Right on time, eh? Yeah. That's Norris. This is Fred. I sure hope there's something you can do for him. Well, I'll certainly do everything I can. Nice seeing you, Fred. How are things going? You don't get much change on a vacation like this. This is Mr. Masters. He's going to open your case again. Swayze. James Swayze. Nice of Mr. Masters. I sure hope you can find something for a new trial. When? Tomorrow afternoon. Certainly is nice of you, Mr. Norris. Real nice. Money. You can count on me, Fred. I won't let you down. All set. My friend here is the client. Let's see my bank book. Okay, thanks. And I sure hope you can do something for me, Mr. Masters. We'll be seeing you, Fred, as soon as Mr. Masters gets something to work on. My name's Woolman. 
Swayze, James Swayze. Breaking an entry, second offense. Federal Reserve Bank. Communist, convicted of a conspiracy to overthrow the government by force and violence. I wouldn't blame you if you asked for another cellmate. We all make mistakes, Swayze. As soon as Masses gets here, get over to the roof and keep an eye on Fred's cell all day. Here he is now. Go ahead, I'll let him in. We had a little trouble. Come on in, I'll tell you about it. Swayze's got a new cellmate. When? After we left Fred. It can mean trouble. You can still do the job, can't you? Yeah, but what if the new cellmate is a cop? We'll do it when he's not around. I'd rather blow the deal. Sure, you'd rather blow it, but we wouldn't. It's not safe now. If it were safe, it wouldn't be worth $10,000. Listen, Kami. Never mind now, Norris. Don't say anything that you'd be sorry for. All right. We'll go ahead. Hello, Herb. Jerry, you shouldn't be here. There's a man downstairs and another man down the hall with the door open. It's all right. They're my men. I should have known. Incidentally, uh, just so you feel safe about our meeting here, I had the men come in and check the office to make sure it wasn't wired. We can talk here. Good. We ran into a little trouble. Zimmer spotted the man that you placed in Swayze's cell. You mean they know he's an agent? No, they're not sure, but just the new cellmate has him worried. Oh. Norris wanted to call this deal off? Yeah, but I... I think I persuaded him to go on through with it. Oh. What time do they plan on having Zimmer make his move? After lunch. Herm, how does Norris plan to cover up in case something goes wrong? Well, Zimmer's the only person leading directly up to Norris. He's got other friends that'll take care of Zimmer and keep him quiet. You've got to admit, Herb, that the FBI gives you a chance to meet all kinds of people. Yeah, but wait a minute, Jerry. What's to prevent my being indicted as an accessory to murder? Personally, I'm not doing much sleeping these nights, just worrying about that. Yeah. Well, we'll wait until we think Zimmer has the weapon, then we'll pull him into the warden's office. And we'll pull Norris in and hang a manslaughter attempt on the two of them from the material we have so far, thanks to you. Yeah, but my voice is on that tape. Norris won't dare identify you, Herb. He'll hang himself if he even mentions the name Masters. Hmm. What about the party? They can change their mood any time they want and pin this whole Norris thing right on my manly little chest. Any time the party gets in that mood, Herb, they can always find something. Yeah, I suppose you're right. What'll happen to Swayze? Uh, we're moving Swayze to a maximum security prison where we can give him the kind of coverage he'll need night and day. When? After he talks. Then we take Zimmer. See ya. the window now. Do J O B do job in the M O R N job in the morning. Yeah, not after lunch. You're leaving work early, Herb. Well, yes, I seem to be pretty well caught up. Do you feel that this trouble we've been having with arrangements lately, uh, you think that'll make any difference? No. I think Norris intends to go right ahead. We need to evolve a plan to take effect in case Norris fails. The party must be protected. 
We cannot permit Swayze to talk or to give any court testimony. But how? Do you have a plan? Yes. We have a good party man who's made application for a job as a guard. He got in touch with us today. He's been accepted and will take his post within a week. That sounds like pretty good insurance. You know, the party needs to become more flexible. With the expert opposition we have, we can only hope to survive if we can keep one step ahead of our enemies. Well, I imagine the newspapers will tell us very soon whether we need to employ an alternate plan. Yes. I'll be waiting. And Herb. Yeah? If that new man in Swayze's cell is an FBI man, I'll be very curious to know why he appeared at just this particular time. Well, if Swayze's ready to talk... Then they wouldn't need to put an FBI man in there with him. But if they thought he needed protection, now that makes sense. Just what are you trying to say? Just this. The party will ask me for an explanation. I'm depending on you to have one ready. Want to drop me off? sucking in other people. I don't want to be dragged in to answer for this. You had a close one then. Let's go. Right. Go ahead. Okay. Norris crossed us. They were supposed to get Swayze after lunch. Swayze wasn't hurt. We were lucky. He's being moved to another prison. Where that is will have to be kept secret until after he's given us all his information. Yeah? Well, you pulled it off, Jerry. The FBI wasn't in the papers. Who got Zimmer? Our man. Huh. You're in. The papers will carry the story that the warden knew about the knife and had them watched, and that he wired the visitor's room to tape the meeting between Zimmer and Norris. Good. That'll keep me out of trouble with Carter and the party. Yeah. The story in the paper will also say that the police are looking for a man by the name of Masters. Don't use that name again. Party won't let me, not after my close brush with the law. Thanks, Jerry. Thank you. You know, this attempt on his life was a big help to us. He's so mad now, he's ready to talk his head off. One of the new guards at the prison is a party member. Oh, which one? All I know is he starts next week. He was supposed to get Swayze if Norris missed. Oh, we'll find the guard. Thanks a lot, Herb. For the game? For that? A lot of other things. Uh-huh. More party members ought to have a chance to feel like Swayze. Tired, sick, disillusioned, and picked for party execution. His story might make a lot of party members decide to become good Americans again. have a counter agent in the cell assigned to murder Swayze. It was possible to save his life and to get and use his information against the party.
Next week, another story from the files of a man who spent nine fantastic years as a counter-spy for the Federal Bureau of Investigation. This is a story, a fantastically true story, from the files of Herbert A. Philbrick, who for nine frightening years did lead three lives, citizen, communist, counter-spy, and who has now revealed for the first time his secret files concerning not only his own activities, but also the current activities of other counter-espionage agents. For obvious reasons, the names, dates, and places have been changed, but the story is based on fact. This week, Herbert Philbrick brings you the story of the counter-spy whose routine party assignment was suddenly turned into a matter of life or death. This is what commie state headquarters looks like. You'd never believe that that little man is Comrade Marin, the top party organizer for the whole state. Excuse me. Yes, ma'am, that'll be 26 cents, please. Thank you very much. Please call again. These are your instructions, Comrade. Take this to the Harvey Hotel. Take a seat in the lobby. At precisely 11.05, a man with a suitcase will walk in and sit down next to you. Take out a cigarette and ask him if he has a match. He will then use two matches to light your cigarette. He will then mention the key word, rain. You will reply using the word, storm. He will then pick up this case and his suitcase. You will then wait two minutes and leave the hotel and return to work. Is that all? Just be careful of this case. It contains something important. Mr. Philbrick, I do hope we can be of service to you again, sir. Dressler's waiting. Jerry Dressler, FBI. That's a good feeling. You always run into something like this when you're in a hurry. Yeah, they'll do it every time. Yeah. Okay, Har, what have you got? Courier assignment. I'm going to take this typewriter case to the Harvey Hotel. A second courier will pick it up there at 11.05. Is it a typewriter? No. Too heavy. Weighs about 50 pounds. It's locked. All Marin said was to be careful with it. Harvey Hotel, 11.05. Okay, our men will be there. How are we going to recognize the second courier? He'll be carrying this typewriter case and a suitcase. Outside of that, he'll be as ordinary looking as you or I. Yeah, even more so. All right, Herb, thanks. You better back out and pull around the other street. You don't want to be late on your first assignment for the state boss. <laughs>
Excuse me. Do you happen to have a match? A match? Why, sure, friend. Thank you. Cold outside, isn't it? Looks like we're in for some rain. Yeah, it does look like a little storm might be blowing up. Orders have been changed. You're to take the case to the 2nd Street Station. The Westbound Express stops there at 12 o'clock. I'll leave your tickets here on the seat. Once you're on board the train, you'll be contacted. Wait here a few minutes. Well, good day to you, friend. My case, please. That typewriter case, it's the same as yours. You've got to give the FBI agents the signal that he's only a decoy. The courier's gone, and so are the FBI men. They're following him. No time for a phone call to the FBI now. You've got to be at the 2nd Street Station at noon. You'll just barely have time to get there.